What do you see when you look at this picture? The clouds and of course the sky. Have you ever wondered to yourself, why is the sky blue? Because I know I have, and like me, you probably went to your parents for the answer. And they probably said it was too complicated for you to understand or some other dumb excuse. Or perhaps even they didn't know the answer. Anyways, I assure you it's very simple. All you need is a brain to understand. Which I think all of us have. The sky is blue mainly because of these things. Light from our sun, particles in the atmosphere, and being human. I'll come back to the last part in just a minute. So without further ado, let's get started. When you think about me talking about particles in the atmosphere, you might think that I'm talking about dust or water droplets for space debris which is mistakenly used to explain the sky's blueness. Instead, it's the very small particles in our atmosphere that make the sky look blue. Let me explain. These particles are the molecules of air itself, mostly molecular oxygen, O2, and molecular nitrogen, N2. These molecules are very abundant in our atmosphere and are very, very tiny. In fact, they are even smaller than the wavelengths of visible light. And that's the key. One of the characteristics of light is that it behaves like a wave. As a result, light can be defined by its wavelength and frequency. The frequency is how fast the wave vibrates or goes up and down, as you can see over here. The wavelength is the distance between two peaks of the wave. Visible light consists of a range or spectrum of different wavelengths. Light with the longest wavelengths are at the red end of the spectrum and light with the smallest wavelengths are at the blue and violet end of the spectrum. The sun's rays are actually white in space, so this is a visual error in the illustration. Anyways, this is scattered light. You can see the blue and violet wavelengths are getting scattered everywhere in the atmosphere. Since the blue wavelengths of light are shorter, they're more likely to strike those tiny molecules of nitrogen. And when they do, the wavelengths get scattered in all directions. Now, this effect is known as Rayleigh scattering. Do you know who this person is? You probably don't. But if you do, well good for you. This person is John William Strutt also known as the third Baron Rayleigh. Again, this is John William Strutt. Now the effect I just showed you before, the scattering of light, was first described by John William Strutt, again aka the third Baron Rayleigh. He published mathematical proof that the blue wavelengths in the atmosphere are scattered 16 times more than red wavelengths. That is a big difference. But wait, if violet light has the shortest wavelength of all visible light, and it's scattered even more strongly than tiny particles, then why isn't the sky purple? This is where being human comes in. Our human eyes perceive the middle of the spectrum most sharply. Which is why blue is way easier to see than violet, which is at the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So even though violet light is being scattered around like crazy, we just don't detect it as well as we detect the blue. Fun fact! That's also why the violet band is the hardest to make out in the rainbow. But there are other animals that can see all the way into the ultraviolet end of the spectrum like honeybees and some birds, more specifically 
the common kestrel. So maybe the sky is purple to them? We'll never know for sure. Now, let's conclude this video. Let's have a summary of what we have learned in this video today. We have learned three main things, which all lead to the sky's blueness. Firstly, we have learned about the light from our sun, which is the wavelengths from the sun itself. And when they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they get scattered around in all directions. Secondly, we have learned about the particles in the atmosphere, mostly molecular oxygen and molecular nitrogen, which get striked by those wavelengths in the atmosphere, which again creates Rayleigh scattering. Lastly, being human. As you know, the blue and violet wavelengths are getting scattered around like crazy, but the violet ones are getting scattered around more crazily, you could say. That probably makes the sky's color violet, but because of our eyes and the way we perceive colors, we see blue because it is way easier to see than violet. We just don't catch the violet color being scattered around like crazy in the sky. We focus more on the blue. Now these things were very important as they tell us why the sky is blue. This was my first time making a video and editing, of course. So if there were any presentation errors or editing errors, something or hopefully you didn't get bored I tried to make this as entertaining as possible but also staying relevant to the topic I hope I can make more videos like this to help people get educated or more specifically my classmates get educated so I hope you liked the video if you had any problems please feel free to contact mr. Harris or me for any questions you have regarding the topic.